Welcome back everybody to another Take It Racing 2 devlog. And this one I'll be showing you what I've done since the last video. In the last video, if you remember, I set up the settings to basically change the cursor speed. And I also hinted at this color uh, section here. So I'll first run you through this color thing, and then I'll talk to you about some of the behind the scenes stuff and um, how the car artwork is getting on in order to get that into the game and obviously the spreadsheet in general. So this color, I will uh, just run through each color for you. Uh, these obviously are open to change. These are just like testing colors. But as you can see, when I press them, uh, the other colors stay as themselves. And uh, I'll quickly, you know, hover over this in the um, project so you can see how I did it. Um, but as you can see, there's three colors here. And actually, these are these ones will be locked, um, you know, in the full game. I've made it so when you start a game, these are unlocked so I could test them. Um, and they're just simple, simple colors um, that are kind of nice. I'll leave it on black and white. Okay, so if we go to Take It Racing, we can see we come to here now. That doesn't go anywhere, though. Um, we can also go to this screen, I think, which also doesn't do anything. Um, but I am planning everything around it. And regarding the cars, obviously there aren't any actually in here yet, but you can see if I go into the project now that I've added all of the drag tracks. And you may know that the the functionality for each one is basically identical. And I haven't imp I haven't uh, taken it over from GB Studio 2 into here yet. Um, but basically, if you've seen it before, it's just a little pixel will go up the up the screen. There's B2 one on each side of the track and one will be you and one will be the the ai enemy and obviously this is like the the throttle meter that you have to match with a icon that's uh, telling you to, what to match to and this is the obviously fruity one go uh, lights uh, and basically each one is obviously a different location but their functionality is basically the same the real bulk of the work i've been doing is in the spreadsheets this spreadsheet now has basically all of the values and information that the game will need in order to function. So every car. If we look at the tracks, um, you can see I haven't filled in the prize list for every uh, series yet, but that's fine. If we look at the drag races, the same thing is here. We haven't got the, you know, like the prizes yet or the power, but everything is in place and just needs me to, you know, put in the first stuff again and then test it to see how it works and then think about the, you know, the overall stuff. So I'm at the point now where I need to make the game again. And I've been experimenting, like I said, with a plugin and I'll put this link in the description box. But basically what it does is automate the design part of, of the game for me. So the idea is that this is for making cards like imagine for a board game or a card trading game uh, and basically it automatically puts in the values that you that you set up so this is a template i made for the cars as you can see there's a car image and i've made it specifically this size and if we have a look in my files here you can see that there are a list of cars here all with the same size as this layer here you can also see there's the logo and also the the names of the cars this is specifically for the car brand Arpone, which is basically Maserati in the game. So I know this looks very gorish, like there's lots of colors going on. It's just to help me, you know, identify the different things going on. So as you can see, I did this, I, I tested with this brand first. And basically what the plugin does, because I've set up this template to work with the plugin. For example, if we look at the fuel here, I know that in my game, there is no car that has fuel that's more than 30 so i have here fuel all the way down to fuel 30 as you can see this fuel 6 is the one showing because of the car that last was used um, but it goes from fuel 1 all the way down to fuel 30 and each of these stats also only goes up to 30 uh, and also has the year and obviously the class and the coupe so basically there's a there's a layer group and inside that group is basically a list of layers that will need to be shown or hidden depending on the car that's going to be in place and obviously this name and logo section up here will be replaced with the correct file that i showed you a second ago so obviously i uh 
I looked at this this plugin and I made sure I knew exactly how it worked. And I then set up this spreadsheet here. Uh, I then exported it as a CSV. And then I had to find and replace all the commas and replace them with semicolons in order for it to work. Um, that's just how it works. Unfortunately, um, you can't export a Google Sheet with semicolon separators, but you can in Excel apparently. I then obviously ran the plugin. If you go to image and then obviously this is a plugin I put here. And as you can see, basically you just put the CSV file in, you put the input directory. So you have to have all the logo the, and the names and the car uh, images in the same file. So I did that and then I put it into an output file where it basically just numbers the output and I just um, have them all in one place now. So this is the output and as you can see, it's just every car from the Arpone brand that I put in the spreadsheet um, is right here. Unfortunately, I can't really zoom in and, and skip through them because this, this, the file sizes are so small. Uh, the images are so tiny, obviously, because it's for the Game Boy. But basically, this is doing the work for me. And the best part is that if I need to change a value, all I have to do is update this spreadsheet and then run that again. And let's say with the 223 cards, I wanted to update all of the values by just one value. I didn't need to up them all by one value. Then I would just put it through this, press run, and it would just output those cards with the changed values. And this is really important because... Obviously, with the, with the amount of cars I have, 223, then it, if I had to change just one tiny piece of information on every single thing, then it would take me forever. And that's how I did do it originally, because I had it set up uh, with only the 1950s. And that meant that I could do it, right? So for the 1950s, there are about 17 cars. And then beyond that, there's maybe... Uh, 50 cars, which might seem like a lot, but I didn't have that many, I think, at the very start. Um, so yeah, like 50 cars seems like a lot and you can get through it quite well, but 223, that just is crazy, right? You want to make one change, you have to make um, a lot of effort going into it. So I really recommend you think about automating processes for yourself in your games, especially if you have something very repetitive. By... Uh, Cutting down on the amount of work you have to do and letting the computer do it all, it really helps. The reason why I knew of this is because I, uh, like I said in my other video, I had made a board game before and I, I used Photoshop, which has it built in. It's a thing it's called data sets if you're using um, Photoshop. And basically it meant that I could just have a spreadsheet, put all the values in it, and then it would automatically create the, the cards for me, which was fantastic. And I'm also thinking about creating another uh, board game or trading card game or whatever. Uh, and so I was, this was on my mind. And luckily I thought of it because like making 223 cards, again, it's, it's crazy. Before I go, I just want to say about the racetracks as well. I have finished putting all of this stats into this spreadsheet, which is extremely great. It means that basically all of the design work for the foundation is done. And now all I'm thinking about is, like I said, automating these processes and getting the artwork into the game so that it can start becoming a game again. I know this is very underwhelming compared to the last GB Studio version I had a Ticket Racing 2 in, but it means that I can cleanly create this from scratch and make sure that I, I optimize as much as I can in order to get it all in. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed me discussing this with you. Obviously, it might not be that interesting and often these videos don't get the most views, but I have, I'm mainly doing it for myself to document, you know, how my progress is going. Um, and it's always nice to talk out loud about what I'm doing. Um, and like I said, document my process. So uh, I'll put my patrons up on screen right now. Thank you very much to you guys. You guys are the best. Let me know what you thought of the video by liking and commenting. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Please comment on what you want to see next. And if you think that this would be a, a useful tutorial with the colors and the settings, if you're excited for Take It Racing 2, then you might want to check out my Instagram page. I try to upload a image almost every day just of the cars. And obviously the, uh, the artwork isn't final, but it's obviously representative. If you haven't played it before, there is a demo of Take It Racing 2 in GB Studio 2 up on itch right now that you can play for free. And with all that said, I'll just say thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.